All right, welcome back everybody. Earlier this week, we told you about Neo, the first robot now available for the public to buy for a cool 20K. And today we're taking a deep dive about what this means for humans moving forward. Here's another conversation with AI expert Dr. Patrick Dix on the pros and cons of letting a robot into your house. So we recently heard about this brand new robot, Neo. We've only seen things like this in movies up to this point. It is the first kind of robot the public can actually purchase. What do you think this act alone signifies about the evolution of this kind of AI and technology? It signifies that companies are definitely want, wanting to make more money. Two, they want to assist people. And number three, they want people to spend more money with them. When you have the humanoid named Nemo, Neo, that's about five foot six and 150 something pounds, you have a humanoid that can help out the elderly people. You have a humanoid that can help out somebody with disabilities. So, for instance, the industry for people that are elderly, you know, or someone that has an injury, they could say, well, grandma, or grandpa, the humanoid can help you fold up the clothes or do the dishes if you live in a whole nother state this is cutting a new trend and this is setting a precedence to say well you don't have to worry about uh someone helping out your mo mom or your grand your grandmother or your grandfather let me recite that your grandmother or your grandfather we have neo there and neo can definitely make sure if they fall the operator on the other side can alert the law enforcement alert law enforcement or the emt sorry about that and it definitely can bring some sense of confidence to say somebody definitely can help them out. And I don't have to stress and worry about my grandmother or grandfather fall falling due to trying to wash clothes or take something out of the dishwasher. Interesting point, because I've heard a lot of uh, friends, other family members as well, and colleagues where they've had to take a considerable amount of time off work to care yes. for an elderly grandparent or a parent. And so I think that that would help with your point on that. They wouldn't have to take any time off work. And then even with um, the cost of health care, yep. by the time you add everything up, 20 grand may seem like a really big deal as opposed to hundreds of thousands of dollars what people pay for for um you know in home nurses and things like that so we'll see if that happens but 20k that is the asking price for neo mm -hmm. right now don't love that the robot is taller than me so i would no, prefer yes. to smaller robot <laughs> case anything goes awry, but here we are. This is the first of its kind model. Uh, when do you think that this could become more affordable and other options available for the mass public? In the next couple of years or foreseeable months, all there needs to be is an extreme need. Perfect example, remember t remember flat screen TVs, when they first came out 20 something years ago, they were expensive. Then they mass produced them and they showed people, you don't have to have a TV with that ugly back, at, you know, the back of it sticking out. You now can own a flat screen TV and you can mount it on the wall. All it takes is for companies to market it this way and some incentives to be kicked in and they can mass produce these. And you also have people that come home from a hard day's work and say, well, I'll let Neo help wash the dishes. I'll let Neo help take the trash out. I'll let Neo do it, et cetera. So not only are you going to market it to people that have elderly parents, you're going to market it to younger people that have busy lives with kids. They have activities going on. As long as they market this thing widespread and say there's something in there for everyone, they'll be able to mass produce these things very cheaply and eventually offer an installment payment, or you could do the pay, uh, pay, pay now, pay later, something to that magnitude, or even take a loan out for it. So if My people goodness. want it, they'll, they'll make sure it's affordable for the masses. Okay. So mass produce, you said months or years, and then how far away do you think where it is just like a smartphone, where it is so common in every household across the country? I would say 24 to 48 months at the max, because that humanoid, what's going to happen? You're going to have people go to someone's house and say, oh, well, your back is hurting. Well, how do you do all this stuff with your back hurting? I have a Neo. And now they're doing financing for them. The best way to market anything is to give it to a couple of people free and let them hold on to it or use it yeah. and say, hey, you want you want you a Neo in your home? Well, I want to get one of those. You know, my wife sometimes isn't here or my husband isn't here or Sometimes some of the stuff is heavy. I pulled a muscle in my back. I injured my leg or something. I can let Neo help me out. 
And even if your kids are there, you could say, hey, Neil can help with the dishes. So now everyone is able to use it. When they market Neil and they mm -hmm. let everyone get something out of it, it will definitely be a hit and they'll be able to mass produce it even faster. So I could see some tech influencers getting them for free, like you mm -hmm. said, and then we'll see them all over social media and then people with the money and then not with the money, the, the more yep. months go on. Okay, one more question on this topic, privacy. So- yes. This is an issue because when this story came out, it scared people. They liked the idea that, uh, hey, I may never have to do laundry again, but you have to sign a waiver. Mm -hmm. So talk to us about what that entails if you were to get a robot like Neo. Well, if you get a robot like Neo, one of the main things you have to understand is you are waiving your rights to privacy because the operator on the other end that's operating it remotely, they have to see your home. So that means whatever is in your home, when you sign that terms and agreements or software licensing agreement, they have to see that. That is the biggest issue with the privacy. Then the question that we've always asked, what are they doing with that data? What are they doing with the images? If they were to see a bill on the counter, are they scanning that bill and sending it back? Then you have to worry about once Neo takes images of the inside of your home, are you going to get spammed or you're going to get information about, I want you to purchase this. I want you to purchase mm -hmm. this. A great example would be if you have Dawn dish detergent on your counter or you have Tide in the laundry room, they're going to say this person uses Tide or this, this person uses Tide or Dawn a lot. How about I send them coupons or I just send them random samples? And the first thing you're thinking is how do they know that? The Neo robot that's in your home that has the camera on it that's able to get that's able to gather that data and send it back mm. and they run it through data mining and they're able to see this is the these are some of the types of items we need to ship out to people you got to read that fine print but i i tell you what patrick if if i were to get a neo and then get an ad from wayfair hey you look like you need a new couch yeah. that would be very insulting <laughs> I'm scanning my yes it would be sure does it we don't have we don't have the same style yeah. um yeah it's definitely something to think about um i don't know that is you so you would have to think of the eyeballs like two cameras and there's a human being yep. on the other end looking inside your home i don't know that i that many people would feel comfortable with that we'll have to wait and see with that mm -hmm. exactly